Hey, welcome, I'm Bob Proctor. Do you know in 2006, when The Secret hit the street, it went all over the world. A half a billion people have been impacted by that movie and the book. Rhonda Byrne made up her mind she wanted to change a billion lives. Well, she's well on her way to doing that. A half a billion that we know of have been impacted by The Secret. And the base of the secret of the essence behind the secret was the law of attraction. After the secret came out, there was books written on the law of attraction. People were speaking on the law of attraction as if it had never been heard of before. But the law of attraction goes a long ways back. Do you know Andrew Carnegie talked about the law of attraction in 1908 when he was mentoring Napoleon Hill? I started to study this information in 1961. 25 years later, I wrote the book, You Were Born Rich. You can go on to our site, go to proctorgallagher.com, and you can download this book for absolutely nothing. We don't charge anything. I want everybody to understand this information. But on page 109 in that book was the law of vibration and attraction. You see, vibration and attraction go together. Attraction is a secondary law. Vibration is the primary law. Everything vibrates. The law of vibration decrees that nothing rests. Everything moves. We literally live in an ocean of motion. So over the next 30 or 40 minutes, I'm going to go through what I understand about the law of attraction. It has changed my life like night and day, and I believe it'll change yours. A lot of people that are talking about the law of attraction don't understand it in any depth. They may have a shallow understanding of it, but I think you want to know it and know it well. Well, I've been studying it for a long, long time, and I have found that understanding this law will definitely change your life. And by the way, you can go and download the book, cost you nothing, just go to our site and download You Were Born Rich, because the truth is, you were born rich. Most people are just a little short of money, but we all have deep reservoirs of talent and ability within us. The Proctor Gallagher Institute is all over the world. You see my globe here, it just keeps moving. Well, we do too. And we have people that represent our company all over the world. You see, it was way back in 1961 that I actually started to study that. That was 55 years ago. And I've never stopped studying it. I have found this information to be absolutely fascinating. Now, over the next 30 minutes, I'm going to ask you to really think. And why should you? Well, because you can have virtually anything you want. Now, before we get into the law of attraction in any depth, I want you to stop and think about the goals that you're working on. See, most people are involved in A-type goals. A-type goals are going after what you already know how to do. You'll often hear a person say they've got a goal to get a new car. Well, you might ask them, have you ever had a new car? Oh, yeah, I've had two or three of them. See, they've known for a long time how to get a new car. That is not a goal. That may be something they want to do, and they sh certainly should if that's what they want. A goal is something that we set that's going to draw the best out of us. Goals are not to get. That's a side benefit. Goals are to grow. Well, generally, if a person graduates from going after what they know how to do, they go after what they think they can do. I call that a B-type goal. Now, doing what you think you can do, there's no, there's no inspiration in it. There's no real growth to it. It's sort of a little game of manipulation. If she does this, if he does that, if I can get this, then I could reach this goal. I want you to really understand this law. And when you understand it, you're going to start to operate on a totally different vibration. You're going to move into a whole new world. You're going to start stretching. And that's what you, what you really want to do. You see, you are God's highest form of creation. You have been built with mental tools that enable you to create. That's the C-type goal, a creative goal. This is going after what you really want. You don't know how to get it, but you know you're going to get it. Now, stop and think in history. The Wright brothers didn't know how to get in the, the plane in the ground, but they knew they were going to get it in the ground. Ed Hillary did not know he was, how he was going to get to the top of the mountain, but he knew he was going to the top of the mountain. What do you really want? Now, think. Just come along with me and daydream for a few minutes. And then I'm going to show you some of the rules that you can follow. Stop and think of this. Do you think Steve Jobs knew how to do this before he did it? No. He couldn't tell you how he did this until after he did it. And that's the same with anything in life. 
people that have done great work didn't know how they were going to do it. Roger Bannister didn't know how to run the four-minute mile until after he had run a four-minute mile. And you know the strange thing about it, within months, somebody else was running a four-minute mile, and I believe now we're running the Boston Marathon in under a five-minute mile. So pretty soon they'll be doing that in a four-minute mile. What do you really want? I want you to think about the dream home. I was talking to a young lady in our company, Lisa, and she was telling me, I said, Lisa, what do you really want? And she was telling me about the home. She, really, she started to describe it. I said, go after it, Lisa. Go after it. How about the trip you want to take? Or maybe the business you want to build? Do you see, I remember my brother-in-law and sister in their early 50s. He had built a safety supply company for three other people. He had run them and built them, but it was a job. And an opportunity came up to buy a small safety supply company. He was very nervous. He was in his early 50s. But you know, they hawked their house. They borrowed money. They took everything they had and plowed it into this company. Today, they're multimillionaires. They're virtually retired. They still work at it. But their son and grandsons run that business. And it's grown into a beautifully big business. It would never have happened if they hadn't followed their dream. I want you to follow yours. Understand this, if you can see it, you don't have to know how to get it. Your life will change. You see, you're a whole lot more than what you appear to be on the surface. Now, that would be a photograph of you if it was taken with a Curlian camera. Simeon Curlian perfected a form of photography where he photographs the body. And you look so much different than in just in regular life. You see, you're so much more than you appear to be, or even think you are. You already have within all that's required to attract, literally. You already have within all that's required to attract whatever you want into your life. Now, I want you to think of this before we go any further. There's only two sources of reference to go to to find out anything about yourself. One science and the other's theology. Both of them clearly indicate Nothing is created or destroyed. If nothing's created or destroyed, then everything's already here, if not in one state, another. Here is a plastic bottle full of water. The plastic used to be oil. The water used to be air, ether, or gas. I could take and I'd boil that water, and it would go right back to where it came from. Now think about that for a moment. The water, the bottle, and my body are all made from the same thing. It's energy. My body is energy. Hold your hand in front of you and look at it. Do you know that hand is changing at the rate of millions of cells per second? Just like that, it's changing. How is yours changing? You cast off millions of cells, 40, 50 million cells per second, and you cre recreate more. Well, do you know that we can create the life we want? We can put ourselves into the vibration that we have to be in to attract what we want to attract. Think of this. If I hit my phone, hit send, and I had your number on it like that, the message would be on your phone. How's that happening? It's happening through vibration. That's really how it's happening. Well, you know, our whole world operates that way. It's so phenomenal. Now, I've put this together. This is sort of an overview of what I'm going to do. I think it's kind of cute, and I put it together for you. I want you to keep your eye on the ball. Keep your eye on the ball. Understand this. You're dealing with the mind. Nobody's ever seen the mind. No one has ever seen the mind. The mind and the law of vibration are two things. When you start to understand them, everything starts to improve. When you really understand them, you take control of your life. You've been given the ability to do that. All you have to do is learn how. And I'm going to show you how here in the next 30 minutes. Let that drawing, that circle, represent your mind. There's two parts to it. If you notice that, there's a horizontal line right through the center. Let's put a body on it. We'll say that's the body and the top half is the mind. And we'll bring it down here to work with it. See, there you've got your conscious mind. Then you have your subconscious mind. And then the instrument of the mind, because that's what the body is. And the body moves into action and produces results. See, the body acts according to the vibration it's in. Now, this may sound a little out of the box, but stay with me, and I guarantee you'll understand it. If I can learn it, you certainly can. Now, not only are we getting the results we got, but we also have a picture in our mind, a dream. 
we've got this beautiful star that we want to shoot at. And you see, that dream is up there, but it's up there and it's on a different level. It's an invisible world. It's where only one person can see it, you. Only one person can see it, me. Earl Nightingale put it very well. I spent five years working with Earl. It was a marvelous experience. He said, this great dream, this surging, dynamic thing, invisible to all the world, except to the person who holds it, is responsible for every great advance of humankind. Now, you see, this is the world we relate to down here. This is the visible world, the physical world. And we live to our senses. We go by what we see, hear, smell, taste, touch. We get a report card, and we let the report card tell us what kind of students we are. We graduate from school, and the report card becomes the balance sheet or the bank account. Let's understand that anything we see outside was originated inside. That's right. Now, it's the space here that we want to close. We want to understand how to close that space. How do we go from where we are to where we want to be? That's a rather an interesting question. You see, this is where the attraction starts. It starts here in the non-physical world. Now, this is a mind game. You must understand the mind if you're really going to make it happen. And when you study this and start to understand it, then you attract according to the vibration you're in. And you'll start to understand that. You control the vibration. Your brain is electronic switching station. As you activate brain cells, you alter the vibration you're in. As you alter the vibration, you alter what you attract into your life. So do you see, you've got to understand how to control the vibration. And you can do that. And I'm going to show you. I'm going to give you a quick lesson in it. And when you get it, everything will change. Way back in 1934, the same year that Simeon Curlian perfected the form of photography, where you can photograph mass and photograph the energy leaving the body, there was a doctor down in San Antonio, Texas, Dr. Thurman Fleet. He wanted to understand the mind, and he wanted to understand paradigms. See, paradigm is a mind program. It's a program in your subconscious mind that's controlling your behavior. Think of this for a moment. You already know how to do better than you're doing but you're not doing it. Everybody does. See, the part of our mind that knows things and the part that controls our behavior, two different parts. That's right. So let's talk about your part, your mind, and your paradigm. The paradigm is the programming in the subconscious mind that controls our behavior. Now, Fleet understood this. And he, uh, he was very much into holistic health and uh, very much into metaphysics. And he said, nobody's ever seen the mind. The mind is an activity. It's not a thing. And no one's ever seen it. He said, I am going to eliminate confusion. I'm going to make a picture of the mind. And he drew a picture. He says, just use your imagination, and this becomes the mind. Now look at that. Do you know that this is the most magnificent idea I've ever come across in 55 years of studying ideas? I've got a beautiful library here. I have another one in the house. I'm in my studio right now. And we take we tuck that circle and we draw a line across. And then we say, that's the conscious mind, that's the subconscious mind, and then this is the body. Now, I want you to really play with this. That is, without question, the most valuable idea I've ever learned. Leland Bell Van der Waal, who's gone now, God bless him, he shared that with me. See, I had been studying with no formal education, no business experience. My income went from nothing to over a million dollars a year. I was cleaning offices. I just wanted to earn some extra money. But I started to use this information, and the business started to grow. I was living in England, and I wondered, how did I do this? I knew that I wasn't that smart. I'd been raised to believe if you're going to earn a lot of money, you've got to be really smart. I wasn't that smart, but I was earning a lot of money. I was raised to believe if you uh, don't have a good formal education, you'll never get a good job. Well, I didn't have any formal education. I had two months high school. I didn't have a good job. I owned the company. I did not believe that there was an emotional or capricious God that reached out and blessed me, and I didn't think I was lucky. So I made up my mind I was going to figure out why I changed, and I started to study, and I never stopped. I was living in Chicago. I left my business and I went to work with Earl Nightingale and Lloyd Conant because I knew that they knew something I wanted to know. And I was working there, and somebody told me about a guy in Vancouver, British Columbia, so I jumped on a plane and off I went. As soon as he opened his mouth like that, I knew he knew what he was talking about. When the meeting was over, it was a couple of days, I went and asked him, I said, could I spend a couple hours with you? 
And I remember him looking at his watch, and he said, I'd like to spend a couple hours with you, but he said, i got to catch a plane. I said, i got to catch a plane, too. I don't mean right now. He said, where are you going? I said, I'm going home. He said, where do you live? And I said, Chicago. We well, said, what are you doing out here? I said, I come out to hear you speak. I think he was impressed that I flew so far to listen to him. He said, I'm not going to be in Chicago anytime in the near future, but I'm going to be in Toronto. And I said, I'm actually from Toronto. I'll come over there and see you. It's only an hour away. And so I flew over. The two of us sat down, which was going to be for a couple hours. We were there for about three days. And he started to show me things about the mind. Everything I had studied for over 10 years was all coming together. And if you follow what I'm teaching, if you really listen to what I'm saying, everything you've studied is going to come together. So let's take a look at this. There's the drawing, and we'll say there's the conscious, the subconscious, and the body. Now, the conscious mind is your thinking mind. That's the part of you that thinks. That's also what we call the educated mind, okay? This is where the intellect is resonant. Now, the intellect is something most people really don't understand. We should, but we don't. We've got intellectual factors. We have these higher faculties. I'll talk about them in a minute. We are not taught to use them. We are taught to go by what we see, hear, smell, taste, and touch. We are trained, literally trained, as little kids at home and then in school, to let the outside world control us. We are programmed genetically at the moment of conception. See, all mom's DNA and all dad's DNA comes together, it becomes your DNA, my DNA. And then 280 days later, we make our debut on the planet, and we're programmed from outside. Now listen, our subconscious works quite different than the conscious mind. The subconscious is our emotional mind. Now, you're going to want to learn more about this, and we certainly teach a lot about it. I'm just going over this so you'll understand this law of attraction. Now we've got the ability to think we can think anything we want. Every great leader that has ever lived has been in complete unanimous agreement on this one point. You and I become what we think about. They've disagreed on virtually everything else. Because we have that ability to think, we can choose. Now go back to the thinking for a minute. Viktor Frankl wrote a marvelous book, Man's Search for Meaning. He was a Jewish psychiatrist that spent war years in a concentration camp. He said that no one, regardless of the intellectual or physical abuse he's subjected to, no one could cause him to think something he didn't want to think. See, that's where we have the ability to choose. We have the ability to accept or reject everything we hear. Everything we hear on TV, on the newspapers, or everything you overhear or something somebody tells us. And if we reject the information, we have the ability within us to originate new information. Now, all that is true in the conscious mind, except to reject, not on the subconscious. Your subconscious mind must accept everything that's given to it. And that's the universal mind. That's what controls the vibration you're in. Whatever information you impress, you must accept. It has no ability to reject. Now, think of this. Your subconscious mind cannot differentiate between what's real and what's imagined. Whatever you impress, whether you imagine it, whether you hear it, read it, if you get emotionally involved in it, it's real. Now, that's pretty wild when you think about it. You see, it's what you impress upon the subconscious that controls the vibration you're in. The vibration you're in is the frequency that you're operating on. If you are operating on a negative frequency, you're going to feel bad. Feeling is a word we invented to describe our conscious aware awareness of the vibration we're in. We all vibrate. We're on a level of vibration. Become tuned into your own feelings. Become aware of what is happening. If you don't feel good, you have the ability just like that to alter the vibration you're in. You can change the ideas in your mind, and when you do that, everything in your life changes. Now let's look at this for a moment. This is rather interesting. Albert Einstein said something pretty interesting. He said that everything is energy, and that's all there is to it. He said, match the frequency of the reality you want, and you cannot help but get that reality. It can be no other way. This is not a philosophy. This is physics. Match the frequency of the reality you want. Now, what does science and theology teach us? Nothing's created or destroyed. So everything's already here. You see, Jobs and his engineers just had to get on the frequency that this was on. And we have it. Look at what I'm doing right now. Do you know, I'm here in my studio. 
and the studio is something that I built in my mind. It was a dream I had. I was sitting out under an umbrella one summer day, and I looked in my backyard, and I started to build a picture of this studio. Well, you know, today I have a studio here where I can operate four cameras at the same time. Everything that I'm recording is streaming into a computer in another room, different room than I'm in. I have all the lights here. I have everything I want. The man that's running this computer right now for me is in Phoenix, Arizona, Joshua Carr. He's our IT guy. He's a genius when it comes to this stuff, but he's in Phoenix. We have a lady that is watching me do this on her computer in Dallas, Texas. Mikey Steller, who's in charge of creative, is in Dallas, Texas, and she's watching me do this. Now, I had done this yesterday. I've actually done it twice, but she made some suggestions of alterations that I may make in the presentation that would help you understand this better, and so I rewrote it. I changed it. I didn't rewrite it. I just altered the whole plan, and I said, I'll do it over again because I liked her suggestions. She's watching this in Dallas, Texas. There's just a little, I don't know, 10-second delay on it, but she's in Dallas watching it. Josh is in Phoenix watching it, and I believe Sandy Gallagher, my business partner, is in Sun Valley, Idaho, in her condo, and she's watching me do this here. We will take when this is finished and distribute it all over the world. Now, I had the image of building this studio where I can broadcast. It's like a mini television set. I can broadcast all over the world from the studio. Now, there's a train not too far from here. I didn't want any sound. I didn't want a train or something outside, a plane going over, interrupt what I was doing. So this is what we call a floating cell. They built the building, and then they built a building inside the building. The building is soundproof. It's all built. It was an image I had in my mind. I found the people to do it. What did we do? We changed energy into energy. Now, I want you to think. Match the frequency of the good you desire. Remember I said build the dream in your mind? Well, now we're going to get a little more serious about this. Let's look at this. You are a mass of energy, and you function on frequencies. You are literally a mass of energy. You are, and you function on frequencies. Now, I want you to let lines, horizontal lines, represent the frequency. That represents you, and you're in a high speed of vibration. Now, think of this for a moment. A frequency is a level of vibration, okay? Let's go back. There you are. You're in a high speed of vibration. Now, you change your vibration, and the color and the density of that energy leaving your body will change. You can cause it to change color, and it will go a long way out if the energy is strong, okay? A frequency is a level of vibration. The good that you desire is on a frequency. That's what Einstein said, match the frequency of the reality you want. Now think of this for a moment. There are literally an infinite number of frequencies. There is no end to them. So look at it here. We see all of these lines, and we're going to say they all represent frequencies. Okay? There's an infinite number. Just stop and think of the number of frequencies we got. That's what a phone number is. It's a frequency. It's how you tune in on their frequency. You have to have my number to tune in on my frequency. This is being broadcast on a frequency. Now, here's something we really want to understand. Every frequency or every one is connected to the one above and the one below. They're connected like the colors of a rainbow. There's no line of demarcation where one stops and the other starts. Now, you may be saying, well, What's this got to do with my dream? It's got everything to do with your dream. If you have been stuck, if you have had a difficult time altering your income, if you had a difficult time attracting into your life the relationship or the business that you want, it's because you're on the wrong frequency and you're using the wrong tools. You're going by what you see, hear, smell, taste, touch. Look at what Einstein said. He said the intuitive mind is a sacred gift. The rational mind is a faithful servant. This is so true. We've created a society that honors the servant and has forgotten the gift. What is the gift? Your higher faculties. You have perception, memory, imagination, reason, intuition, and the will. 
These are all high mental tools. Through imagination, we can zip ourselves onto a higher frequency. We just use our imagination and build a picture of the good we want. And then we hold that picture with our will. The will is what gives us the idea to focus, to concentrate. When President John Kennedy asked Dr. Werner von Braun what it would take to build a rocket that would carry a man to the moon and bring him back safely to Earth, von Braun said, the will to do it. In other words, you've got to see it and hold the picture in your mind. You will attract everything you need. That's just the way it works. You've got these higher faculties. We want to learn how to use them. Okay? It's a beautiful concept. It's an absolutely beautiful concept. Now, I want you to let that X represent where you are. The X represents where you are in your life. Okay? Take an honest look at where you are in your life, and you can see how you got there. Take a look at the income you earn. Now, you know people that are earning a lot more money than you, and they're nowhere near as bright as you. You know them. You know people that have built very successful businesses, and um, they don't seem anywhere near as smart as you. I was talking to Brian Sidorsky on the phone. He has built a very multi-million dollar business, and he wants me to work with him to go to the uh, uh, the world through um, junior achievement, the JCs. Uh, they're all over the world. And I said, I'd be glad to. We're going to share this information. Now think. Let's think of this for a moment. Where you are. You know how you got there because you can look back. You can connect the dots looking back. Let each one of those lines represent levels of vibration or levels of awareness. And you know how you got there. You can just see all the footsteps that took you from one place to the other. You know how you got there. Then you think of your dream. And the dream is out there in space. And you have no idea how you're going to get there. Now, when we were little kids, we'd go to our parents or our guardians, Mommy, Daddy, I want, and they were busy, and they'd say, oh, how are you going to get that? Well, of course, we didn't know how we were going to get it. Why don't you be satisfied with what you've got? You should never be satisfied. Dissatisfaction is a creative state. It was dissatisfaction that gave us the incandescent light. It was dissatisfaction that gave us this means of communication. But we grew up with the idea, if you can't get it, forget it. And so 90-some percent of the population have forgotten it. And we just let the dream go. But here's what you want to know. If you can see it in your head, you can hold it in your hand because that is the frequency. Match the frequency of the good you desire. Now stay with me. You may want to watch this videotape a hundred times until this really sinks in. And through repetition, you'll say, oh, now I see. Now stay with me. Look here for a moment. The moment your belief matches with any state, you fuse with it. And this union results in the activation, projection of the plots and plans and conditions and circumstances. The moment your belief, when you understand this, our belief system is based upon our evaluation of something. And frequently, if we reevaluate a situation, our belief about it will change. Through watching this, through the repetition of watching what I'm going through here, you change your belief about yourself. That's how I change my belief. I've never stopped studying for 55 years. The moment your belief matches with any state, you fuse with it. Well, there's the state you want to fuse with. That's where the dream is. That's a frequency. There is a place. You can use that. You can get your imagination. You can go there. You see? The moment your belief matches with any state, you fuse with it. You become one with it. It becomes one with you. And this union results in the activation and projection of its plots, plans, conditions, and circumstances. When you change your vibration, everything in your world changes. This new state of conscious awareness becomes your home from which you view the world. This new state of conscious awareness becomes your home from which you view the world. You're there in your imagination, and that's how you see it. That's how you see it. It's such a beautiful concept. In your workshop and if you're observant, you will see outer reality shaping itself upon the model of your imagination. Isn't that beautiful? It is your workshop. That's where it is. 
this new state of consciousness becomes your home from which you view the world. It is your workshop. And if you're observant, you'll see the outer reality shaping itself upon the model of your imagination. Now watch. This is so important. Just stay with me. Stay with me. When you move on to a higher frequency, you will be communicating with a world totally foreign to and beyond the reach of your five senses. It's a different world. You cannot communicate there with your sensory factors. Nobody's ever done it before. You're dealing with the unseen. You're dealing at a creative level. You're not going to figure this out with your intellect. You're going to have to use your intuition. You're going to have to follow your feeling. See, intuition is that mental faculty that picks up vibration. You ask a question, the answer is there. That's a law of polarity. This whole universe operates by law. On page 109 that I told you to download, download the book and read it, there's a quote there by Werner von Braun. I quoted him in The Secret. He said, the natural laws of this universe are so precise, we don't have any difficulty building spaceships, sending people to the moon, and we can time the landing with the precision of a fraction of a second. See? When you move on to a higher frequency, you're dealing in a different world. The people you're mixing with don't understand you. They're going to tell you you're crazy. See? Do you know, if you go back far enough, I think it was... Um, Samuel Morris was taken before the United States Congress by some of his good supporters, and they tried to get $30,000 for him to build some wires down and around Maryland where he could stop and start the flow of energy, and he was going to show how you could communicate through wires. Da -da 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 -da. Dalton Myers Morris Code helped win the Second World War, by the way. He had a, con a, con a senator stand up in Congress and say they'd be further ahead to give someone $30,000 to build a railroad to the moon. He got more support than Sam Morris got. People didn't understand. Didn't understand. What was the problem? Ignorance, not knowing. Now, Sam Morris did a little better than Marconi. When Marconi suggested he was going to send a message from one place to the other, he wasn't even going to use any wires. He was just going to send it through the medium of the molecule on a frequency. They had him checked out in a mental institution. Now, both of them did better then Gordiana Bruno, who back around 1600, he was spurting Copernican's theory, who said that this ball wasn't the center of the whole scene of things. They burned poor old Gordy at the stake. Listen, all down through history, whenever a person makes a breakthrough in their immediate environment, the people think they've gone crazy. Well, let's look here for a moment. Okay, There you are there. There's the conscious mind, the subconscious. That's where your intellect is. That's where you get what you want. And then you have the subconscious mind, and the subconscious mind, you must understand, is where the paradigm is. And, of course, you have the body, which is the instrument of the mind. Okay? Now, the law of attraction is always working. It's always working. The law of attraction, though, responds to the paradigm. What do we mean by that? Well, the paradigm, the program, is what controls the vibration that your mind body's in. And it's the vibration you're in that dictates what you attract. What we have to do if we want to change things, we've got to take and make a new paradigm. We've got to shift the paradigm. I've written a book right now um, with Sandy Gallagher on changing paradigms, paradigm shift. When you do that, then the whole world changes. Then you're operating with a new paradigm and you start to attract new things. Now look here for a moment. This is rather interesting. There's the drawing, okay? There's the drawing. We'll put the horizontal line across, okay? And we've got the body, okay? Now, the body is really the instrument. Here on the conscious level, at your imaginative mind, that's where the imagination, that's where you go onto that higher frequency, okay? It's beautiful the way it happens. Here you have the universal mind. That's your subconscious mind. The conscious mind is the imaginative mind. The subconscious is the universal mind. Now, the body is the instrument of the mind. It is actually the instrument of the mind. And we've got to understand that. Now, our imagination, there's a power flowing into our consciousness. And through our imagination, we build the image of what we want. This is the dream. I see what I want. And I've got this beautiful dream. I impress it upon the subconscious, and it turns into a desire. 
So you don't get what you want, you get what you desire. Waddles pointed out in The Science of Getting Rich, the desire is the effort of the unexpressed possibility within seeking expression without through your actions. Well, that desire is expressed through the instrument of the body because the changes the vibration the body's in. The vibration causes you to act and the action sets up an attraction. And it's the action attraction that alters the results. Now think what we're saying here. The desire alters the vibration. The vibration changes the action. The action sets up an attraction. And that's what changes the results. You see, the law of attraction works intellectually. Your intellectual mind, you start thinking, you'll start attracting more thoughts on that frequency. It operates on an emotional level. You start to attract more energy. You move into a higher vibration. And of course, it changes everything on the physical level. It's pretty interesting, isn't it? Now, remember what we said? Don't go for that goal. Get up here. Okay? Build the picture. Build the big picture. Now let's go back where we left off. Remember when we let that go? We don't want to let it go. Because we can fill it in. We can literally fill it in. Now the man that made these iPhones there, Steve Jobs, he was pretty tuned in. Okay? He was pretty tuned in. He had a big goal, and he said, look at this. You can't connect the dots looking forward. You can only connect them looking backwards. So you have to trust that the dots will somehow connect in the future. And if you understand the law of vibration, if you stay on the frequency, if you hold the dream in your mind, and you don't let the outside world control you, you will contract everything that you need, and that space will fill in. The way will be shown. I believe that was written in the Bible. And when you get there, here's what you want to understand. It could have gone there. <laughs> Isn't that a beautiful concept? You could have gone there. You see, you and I only have one problem. Ignorance. We don't understand. You watch this often enough, you're going to get a grip on the law of vibration that's going to change your life like night and day. It put me in this studio. It's helped me earn millions of dollars. I'll be 82 on my next birthday. I got more energy than most people, 22. I have no intentions of slowing down. I've got this globe in front of me to remind me we are building an organization all over the world. And if you want to work with us, if you want to do what we're doing, you just let us know because we've got a great business opportunity. We are teaching and facilitating this all over the world. Do you know that the only thing that slows us down, we're only limited by weakness of attention and poverty of imagination. Wow, that is so good. Weakness of attention, poverty of imagination. Subscribe to YouTube where we are because we're going to make a lot of these videos and we'll send them to you. If you're on our list like that, when you get them, they'll come to you. There's a certain group of people automatically get these. As soon as I do them, we send them out. We're not selling these. We're giving them away. I want you to understand what I understand. I've had an absolutely phenomenal life. Along with my business partner, we built a phenomenal company. We operate in over 100 countries. But we haven't even started. We're going to build this so big. We have a phenomenal team of people in our company. We have attracted some of the most beautiful people you'll ever want to meet. <laughs> you know, it's a funny thing. I have made two or three versions of this, but I keep altering it and fixing it. I was in a uh, super mall or in a mall the other night couple of nights ago, and my uh, wife was buying some cosmetics, and I was just sort of hanging around waiting, and this woman, I could see her circling around. She was pushing a stroller, and she came over, and she said, do you know who you look like? And I said, no, who do I look like? You just look like Bob Proctor, and I said, really? I said, that's because I am Bob. She said, you're not Bob Proctor, and I said, no, I'm Bob Proctor. She said, show me your identification. Well, I couldn't get over. I thought this one was a cop or something. So I, I thought I'd humor. I took out a credit card and showed Wow! Oh! And she was going a little nuts. Her name was Shelly. And so I've asked Joshua to send Shelly this video. She loves studying our material. So Shelly, 
you and all the rest of the people in the world that love our material, God bless you. We want to keep it coming, and we want you to keep studying it. We want to expand the thinking of everybody, but clearly understand the law of vibration. When you understand the law of vibration, the whole world will expand. This is Bob Proctor. Thank you.